Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for March 4th, 2021. Well, doggone it, yesterday we had a real choppy day. First off in the morning, the, the pre-market futures, they were really pumping them hard, trying to gain some confidence and lift the market, but they ran into a substantial roadblock yesterday when we learned that uh, mortgage applications have stalled and that our jobs, our ADP jobs number or private payrolls missed the target dramatically yesterday, coming in much lower than expected. That created some trouble and we spent the rest of the day kind of seesawing back and forth with the Dow um, there was really a, a major attempt here in the Dow to just continue to try and lift and lift and lift throughout the day. And it created some substantial whipsaws um, in the market. Now, what ended up happening is we eventually saw those sellers came come in and it had a ugly effect on our tech sector. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we grab ourselves something to drink settle into our office chairs and let's take a look at these technicals and see if we can get an idea how we might want to approach the market today with the Thursday edition of the morning market prep video. So good morning once again everyone. Um, yesterday was a challenging day and I think hopes were, were we would run up those hopes. Um, the Dow would be up a hundred points and then Boom, those bears would come in and battle it back. And at the end of the day, we we ran into that price resistance. Now I know no one wants to hear this, and I and I understand it. It's never fun when a person has to point out the problems that we're starting to see in these charts. So please keep in mind, I'm not horribly bearish, but at the same time, we have concerns here that we really need to, to pay attention to, and they have proven to be correct as we take a look at this market. I know everyone's thinking that the, the stimulus bill is going to uh, fire us up, and it may do that, but we still have some problems here that we're going to have to take care of, and now we're starting to see some technical damage in a couple areas of the market. Here on the Dow, we're holding up pretty darn well overall. You can see we're holding in this price support level. So far, nothing terrible um, going on in this chart, but unfortunately, um, we are seeing a little bit of pain and suffering here as we continue to struggle in this consolidating move. Now, one of the things that we've been seeing is the tech sector selling off, and with the big giant techs um, like Microsoft and Apple being included in the Dow, it's going to be really tough for the rest of that um, um, index to lift if those two guys, those big guys, are selling off because they hold such a big weight in that um, in that um, index. So we've got some trouble here with the Dow, but I got to say the Dow is holding up better than one of the um, than the other indexes. And really it's because they only have two of those big techs in that um, uh, that area. And we've seen some pretty good buying into some of those industrials and some of those old tech giants or old um, industrial giants. So watch that closely. Then let's take a look at the SPY. SPY, doggone it. SPY ran into some serious trouble here. And once again, we failed at a lower high in the chart. Now, that is not a super terrible problem as long as we can hold some price support. But unfortunately, um, we've got that tech sector in a little bit of trouble. Right now, we're holding onto that price support. Good news is we did hold it into the close. Bad news is we are now um, showing that lower high. We will be an official downtrend if we break that low and close below that area. That may or may not occur. 
we'll want to watch that closely. But one thing is for certain is that resistance level up here is pretty substantial and we continue to struggle with that. If we take a look at our moving averages, notice that we're camping out right here on the 50 day moving average. We're trying to hold. This morning we're seeing just a tiny little bit of bearishness, but in the pre-market here, they're trying to pump that back up again. And we've been seeing that every morning, this pre-market pump, pre-market pump, pre-market pump, and then the market opens and those bears come in and fight it um, to, from moving to the upside. So be really careful getting too excited about that pre-market pump. If we can hold right in here, we should do okay. If the, if the SPY can hold that 50 day moving average, get another test of that, notice that that could actually create a double test or what they call a double bottom on the SPY. If we can hold there and find enough energy in those bulls to push up off of there, we could be in pretty good shape. But once again, if those bears come in and continue to attack and the possibility exists, if we continue to sell off in the NASDAQ, that we slip below this level. And then we've really got some technical damage in the SPY. Let's take a look at the QQQ. Here's our problem child with that NASDAQ. And I have been mentioning before that possibility of a head and shoulders topping pattern forming. This would be the neckline of our topping pattern and notice we have really formed that pattern pretty clearly now in the chart and um, at the close of yesterday um, we um, had made a new low breaking this down so we have a lower high and a lower low which officially holds us into a downtrend um, in the nasdaq if those big tech stocks continue to experience selling here. This is what could drag down the SPY and the Dow. Remember, these guys are giants. They are massive, massive companies. And they hold such a massive weight in the indexes that they could just serve as that boat anchor just dragging down those other indexes if they continue to sell off. Now, one thing I would suggest is that we may be in a short term oversold condition here in the NASDAQ. That could provide us with a little bit of a relief rally um, if um, we can get those bulls to re-engage here. Um, if we do get that relief rally, however, we do have that major problem in the fact that our 50 day moving average is starting to flatten out and show a little bit of rollover. We have that downtrend in place. So even if we rally back up, we're going to have to watch this pretty closely for that potential of failure. Uh, to continue on to the downside. Remember, a very, very typical pattern in the market is when a stock or a index fails at its 50 day moving average, that it can find its way down to the 200 day average, which is a pretty substantial drop in the market and can be very, very painful. Um, so watch that closely. By the way, if we were to measure out a head and shoulders pattern here, if you've never done this, measure across the neckline, grab yourself a trend line and measure down from the head of that trend down to the neckline and then move that line to the failure point here and you can see that is a direct link to that 200 day moving average. That's how you measure off a head and shoulders pattern. So watch that closely. If we continue to experience selling in that tech sector, we could have some trouble. Watch that close. Then let's take a look at IWM. Now IWM, like the Dow, has been holding up relatively well. We've experienced some pretty good hold and really strong um, upside action in um, oil sector and the financial sector. Now I do have kind of an inkling that we may have pushed that oil sector too hard and we could start seeing a bit of a pullback in that oil or energy sector. So watch that closely. If we, if we kind of get those selling off, we could really see 
a little bit of trouble here um, and that possible break of that little support could occur. Financial sector continues to hold up quite well, so IWM may do pretty well overall. Let's take a look at the VIX. I need to speed up here because I'm running, going to run out of time if I don't. If we take a look at that VIX, um, we have another complication here in um, our charts and that is that we have made another higher low in that VIX and we're cl we closed yesterday above 26 handles here in that chart. If we notice our moving averages that pushed us above that 200 day moving average in the VIX. Now if that fear continues to come in that could be a bit of a problem for us and we're seeing that in the options market uh, really high prices wide bid ask spreads market makers trying to protect themselves in that chart so watch that carefully um, what we want to see what we need to see is that resting pullback coming into that so if we can get those bulls to re-engage we could see a little bit of a pullback but we have to keep in mind we have a little bit of an uptrend going on here in the VIX if we take a look at another problem and I'm just going to go to T. TBT. TBT is um, inverse ETF on 20-year uh, treasuries. And you can see another problem that we continue to grapple with here in that our bonds, our, our long bonds, are starting to tenaciously hold up here. Um, we don't, we want to see them pulling back. And right now we're seeing just a little teeny tiny pullback this morning, but they are not really selling off. Um, and that is creating additional pressure here in the market as those long bonds just kind of stubbornly hang in there. So watch that closely um, uh, throughout the day. Let's take a look at our um, economic calendar for today and our econ oh i first need to go to t2122 our four week new high new low ratio and in here we've been bouncing around like like a wild person here just all over the place whipping up and down and you're probably experiencing that in your account um, everyone raise your hand if your accounts are being chopped up right now in these wild swings and whipsaws well, that should tell you to back off just a little bit. And we still run some danger here in this uh, T2122 that we could still experience more downside before we reach that oversold condition on T2122. However, we have pulled back enough. If we can get some good bullish news, maybe the jobs number or jobless claims are better than expected or something along those lines, we, we do have substantial upside room now opened up in this chart where we could get a little bit of a relief. So watch that closely. Now let's take a look at our um, um, economic calendar and in our economic calendar we we do have that busy day that we want to pay attention to and actually that could translate even into tomorrow that we'll want to be um, you know thinking about our risk as we go through the rest of this week first off we're going to get these jobless claims this morning we're going to want to watch that pretty closely um, we've seen some hits here we've seen some misses here and certainly with jobs in focus right now we could be a little bit sensitive to that number. We've got productivity and cost factory orders and the natural gas report. These three items I doubt really move the market much at all today. Um, but with our sensitivity to jobs, we'll definitely want to pay attention to that. And then later on today, we have the Fed balance sheet. Everyone knows we just can't continue to add more and more trillions to the balance sheet. Nobody cares. Um, but keep an eye on that one this afternoon. And then keep we're going to have to think about this as we plan. Even if we get a bullish day today, we're going to have to plan carefully because we get that employment situation number tomorrow morning before the bell. You don't want to experience another whipsaw, get a nice beautiful upside move today, which is a possibility, and then hit that jobless or that employment situation number and end up whipsawing the other way. So watch that closely and plan carefully moving through these this jobs data. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar and our earnings calendar is kind of busy today we have over a hundred companies reporting and um, just for um, sake of time here I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this um, if you want to get the full list of reports 
um, click the link just below the title of the video that'll take you back to the morning blog and um, I've got a list of notables a couple of them that we're really going to want to pay attention to though Costco Costco um, I, I gotta tell you that poor thing has been hammered here recently just absolutely pounded and that is a problem for us here in um, um, in the large retail sector, we're seeing the big retailers really selling off strongly. And unfortunately, um, we'll have to wait and see how this earnings report, if it helps or hurts uh, Costco. So keep a close eye on that. Um, and we have Burlington. Burlington, this is one of those smaller retailers, and you can see it looks like they've reported very, very well this morning. Keep a close eye on that as it perks up. So we're seeing some of those little retailers like AEO, ANF, GPS uh, reports today, um, Gap Stores. Um, we're seeing some of those hold up pretty well, UAA, um, those kind, but Target, uh, Costco, um, those are struggling um, in the market right now, so be really careful. So, guys, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please do me a favor. If you could please um, click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that um, bell icon when it pops up so you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. I would certainly appreciate that. And if you feel that this video was worthy, if it helps you plan your day today, if you could do me a favor, click that thumbs up button and also leave that brief comment that helps us continue to grow. And I just want to say thank you so much. It's hard to believe that already I have um, 1,050 videos on YouTube and you guys have just been supporting the channel so well. I want to say thank you so much. Um, seeing that growth, um, truly, truly appreciate it. So how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. And remember, guys, that as we look at these stocks, um, we want to remember that these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security, that you need to do your own due diligence on these positions and make sure they are suitable for you um, in your trading. Never ever blindly follow another person's trading. First off, let's take a look at Starbucks. Starbucks, um, pretty interesting pattern here. Now Starbucks has push through um, a resistance high. Notice we have a pretty substantial resistance high in Starbucks. In this light little pullback in here, trying to hold or trying to pick up some price support in this area. And I want to be watching this fairly closely. If we can hold in here, we may have to rest out toward that trend. Just kind of slip slide over here, rest out toward that trend. But keep an eye on Starbucks. If we can get that bullishness in the market, we can certainly have that possibility that we could um, continue to extend um, this upside move here in Starbucks. I think we should also keep, um, uh, keep 3M in mind. Now this I've been mentioning as a longer term trade. And as you can see, 3M continues to set up here in this possible upside move. By the way, this is a big downtrend and this is a very nice dividend payer in the chart. And I do have a bias on this because I've added to my starter position here in 3M and I'm looking to hold this longer term. Um, and I'll be doing covered calls and things on this uh, trade. But keep an eye on this. Um, we're starting to see some of these big old stodgy companies perking up. And with that in mind, let's take a look at another one of those. Take a look at KHC. Now KHC, once again, I now have a bias on this because I did purchase KHC yesterday. Moving up here, this is another nice divvy pair, kind of a consumer defensive stock. And if I pull this back, look at this beautiful little bottoming pattern that's come in and we broke through that resistance and we've held it as support. So keep a close eye on that. I think there may be some upside here in KHC. So everyone go out and buy some ketchup and some uh, mac and cheese and let's have a party. But um, watch that closely. KHC looking pretty good um, at the moment. We also want to take a look at some of these um, older auto manufacturers, uh, Ford. Ford had a nice little move here to the upside, obviously yesterday, 
pulled back, but really no harm or foul in that pullback yesterday, still holding up pretty nicely. Keep an eye on that chart. Now there is that possibility that Ford may have to rest and continue to rest out here toward this trend. So don't be too surprised if that occurs. We should also keep an eye on GM. General Motors has been holding up quite well and we're reaching out here Let's take this longer term trend here. We're kind of bouncing our way over here to that longer term trend. Keep an eye on that. General Motors may be one of those um, old companies really getting in gear on that um, um, electric vehicle front. So keep a close eye on that. Um, take a look at GE. Now GE, I'm a little bit bummed out because I did close this trade um, the other day when we had the big surge in the market. We were approaching this price resistance in the chart. I did close this trade for a really 64% uh, gain um, on this trade, but doggone it, um, it just kept on going. That's okay. That happens all the time. Um, I never worry about something after I've taken a profit. I never worry about the fact that it continues up because, hey, that money was not mine unless I take the profit. Um, I, know, I don't know what's coming next. And so um, when you gain in the market, don't beat yourself up for making money. Um, so what I want to do on GE is I want to watch this carefully. If this can rest or pull back here, um, find a little pullback, I may be re-engaging here on GE to the upside. So watch that closely. A couple other stocks I think may be worth keeping an eye on. Uh, take a look at Oracle. Oracle um, has been holding up quite well. And this is one of those stocks that has just been kind of invisible to the market for a long time amidst you know all of the tech sector rallies we've been focusing on those big giants um, oracle being a big company itself but notice that we've broken through this resistance up here and we're staying relatively bullish um, overall so any rest or pullback in here could set up an opportunity for upside might want to keep an eye on oracle i think you should also be keeping an eye on altria Altria, another one of those consumer defensive stocks. I actually hold this. Let me show you this. I bought this as a longer term hold. There's that big downtrend again, uh, pushing up through. I've got a beautiful profit on this trade. And if we look at this daily chart, we're continuing to press to the upside um, in Altria. Now, don't be surprised if this needs a little bit more rest in here. Um, won't be a surprise at all, but watch that closely, Altria holding up quite well. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. And once again, thank you everyone for taking the time to watch the video. Click those thumbs up buttons. Click those, leave, leave those brief comments. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I want to wish you all a great day. We'll see you right back here bright and early Friday morning. Have a good one.